Hi, welcome to a project walkthrough for Watts 4000, the application development course for the Web Application Technology Certificate. Um, this week we're going to be talking about uh, responding to user input, and there's going to be two parts. In the first part we'll talk about gathering user input through forms, and in the second part we'll talk about responding to uh, user input through routing, through, so that when a user has successfully uh, submitted a form, maybe we're going to route them to another area of the website. Um, so these are big topics, but I think we're going to be able to get through them in, in this walkthrough. And so we're going to start by forking the SU Web Dev Multi-View app. So let me get that going. And start that forking and then I will give you a look at so when you get this forked and you run npm install you you should see this screen and this is just showing you portions of of a, of a form and a response and we'll be working through that um, this is the application of what it will look like when you're done so you can enter you'll have a form where you can enter your name and email and you'll have a password entry. And when you submit it, if it's valid, it will take you to another view. And um, well, actually, it'll give you this. It gives you this uh, validate. If you validate, it'll give you this success message. We're still. You can see this hashtag. So if you've done the reading, you can, you know that hashes are used to designate views in the front end. And um, so I've got this success message, and then I've got a link. And when I click on the link, it takes me to another view. So I was on the home view, and now I'm on the survey view. And I've got another form, and I've been building them for a long time. And I have some experience in, boy, I've got a little bit here, here. I'll just pick a few of these and these check boxes and then um, what kind of websites um, do I want to build probably fun ones and then uh, do I like tabs or spaces definitely spaces um, when I'm when I'm making tabs so this is you know a web development survey and then you get my secret if you pass you get to this secrets page, this view for secrets. So that is the the end result. And if I wanted to diagram this, you would see that I have start with my home page, which is the route is just the forward slash. Um, and then when I finish that form and it validates, then it takes me to the survey page, which is slash survey. And then when that val when that form validates, I get to see the secret. So those are the routes. And if I don't validate, I don't get the option to move on. And you'll see that too. So let's get into the code for this. And we'll, we'll get this first part implemented. The, this is the full two parts implemented where we get into routing. In the first part, we're just going to work on this home component and get that form working. So let's see, have I got this? Yes, so I've got this now forked to my account and I am going to clone this with SSH and where my PPD. Let's go to tilde projects uh, video 4000 clone right and we'll get that cloned and then we're going to open it up in Visual Studio Code and because this is a view app the first thing that we're going to do is the npm install to get our node modules all the libraries we need to run this with Vue and to build it and once we get the node modules in it's always a good idea to run the npm serve, npm run serve, and um, take a look at the application before any work has been done on it. And you can see it looks like the one that we saw up online where we have sort of a nothing form and an automatic success message. So that's where we're going to start.
We'll use this project walkthrough to guide us along with the to-dos. So we've got this up and running. This is our home view. Um, it's mapped to the forward slash. Uh, so routing is all about mapping, basically mapping a URL, which would be like a slash or a slash survey slash secrets to a component. So there's going to be a component associated with each one of these. And so our home view is associated with the slash. And the first thing that we want to do then is take a look at our code. And let's bring this up. And so in source, now because we're going to ultimately, we haven't got to it yet, we're going to ultimately be running this from, we're going to be loading this component from the router. I've placed it in the views directory rather than the components. And we're going to see in, in exercises and projects down the road that some, thing, some, some view files will end up in components and some will end up in views. And the ones that are going to be routed end up in views. So this home will ultimately be routed and so it starts in the view. And we can see there's a couple of to-dos. There's a function to validate. There's some data defined. So username, email, password, those will be um, picked up by our form. And then we have this show form and show error, and notice they have opposite values. So initially we show the form. Once we enter the data and submit it and it's valid, then we don't show the form. We'll set that to false, and, we'll sh and then we'll either sh show the error or, uh, or we will end up showing a success message. And so let's take a look at how this code is going to get entered. The first thing is we have this mod, we have this form container, and we're going to set a, up a vshow using the show form variable. So we're not we're, we're only going to show the form when show form is true, which it will be initially. So we'll just use vshow equals show form. Now this is different than the vf in that the form will always render, but it will sort of be turned on and off visually. But if you went in with inspect, you would always see it, but you will only but it will only be visual on the browser when the show form is set to true. So that show form is a directive. And the other thing that we want to do is there's a success message in here. Let's take a look here. Success. This one, we only want to show this, we, well, let's see, how can I put this? We only want to show this when the show form is false, because we don't want to show a success message when the show form is true. It's either you're, en you're either entering data in the form or you've successfully done it. So we've removed the showing of that success message. Now we just see our form. There's not a lot going on in it. We just see a submit button. And this is our form here. So you can see the actual form tag starts here. The container is up here. And so what we need to do next is to, the next thing we're going to do is look at our error message. So let's take a look. Where's our error message? Ah, we have a to-do there. So initially, the error it won't show, but we're going to create an element to show that would show when we detect an error in our form submit. So the error is going to be class error v show equals. So there's the show error boolean and we're going to say, please check the information. And this is all in the project notes you have entered. The sure to fill in all the fields. That gives us kind of a clue of what we're going to be checking in validation. We want to see all the fields in our form filled out. Now, if we look at the form, you're not going to see that because show error is set to false um, by in the initialization of the data. So if we wanted to test that, we could set that to true. Let's see what that looks like. So if we set that to true, now you can see this is what the error would look like if I programmatically decided to show it.
But for now, I'm going to leave it initialized at false. Now, the next thing I want to do is look at this form, and I need to set a VON directive for the submit. So forms typically in the past, before we got into single page apps with JavaScript, were always processed on a server. And so they would, we would submit, we would, we would have a button with type submit, and we would just have some instruction, an action attribute on the form that would tell it where to submit it, which server, you know, to submit it to. Well, when you're processing on the front end, you're not going to submit it to a server. You're going to submit it to a function in this front end code. And we're going to use the VON directive to do this. And we use a submit prevent. And what that means is that when it submits, one of the things about this type submit is that if you have a form and you hit the enter key, it will submit it. That's just been a standard on the web for since the beginning. Um, and so setting type submit as, a pull, as opposed to like, say we decided to do a V on click on this button. That would be another way that we could send it to a function. But in traditional web, when you have a form, you submit it, and the submit will occur either when you click on the button or you hit the enter key. So we want to stick with that format. But with JavaScript, when you when you um, trick when you uh, fire off an event like a submit, it's going to want to bubble that up, and we don't want to we don't want to do that. We just want it to, to we want it to make it to our function. And then we want the function to process it, and we don't want that error, that event, that submit event going anywhere else. Because if we did, where it would go is it would tell the browser to refresh the page. It would be, it would say, okay, try to send this to the server, and that results in a page refresh. And you can try that out. I mean, you can leave off that prevent, and you can see what will happen if you do that. But let's, let's set this up to go to a validate form function. And when, and when it gets there, it'll run that function, but then it will be done. It won't fire that submit any farther. So if we go to our validate form, you can see it's going to run down there. Um, so let's go back up here and finish filling in our our field. So we have a set of to-dos here for different types of of inputs. And with inputs, we typically want to have a label. So form inputs have a certain uh, st structure is that, you know, there's a label and then there's the input field, the place where the user types. So let's, and with the label, we use the for to associate the label with the input that it is going to work with. So we have username and I'm going to close that label and let's make that capital. So this is our user username. And then if you look at this, the way this is set up is we have the input included it within this label type equals. So you haven't really seen that happen much in HTML where we nest on one tag inside another, but let's take a look at that username and V model. Now the V model is going to point to one of our, um, let's see, what do we have here? Label, input, label. All right, yeah, we need to close this off. So we've got this label, and it provides the name of the field. And then we have type equals text. So it's going to be string entry, ID, username, and we have V model username. So if we look at this, now we can see here's our label, and then here's our entry field. And uh, another interesting thing is we can take a look at our, our view data and have a look at what we've got there. So you can see that we're in here and we have our params. 
And so we're getting a good look at our view. We'll come back to that later. So let's finish doing our, uh, we've added our username. Let's add the email. So you can see if you do some, if you do some reading on the input types that there are many types that can give you lots of different looking inputs. So let's see, you know what I'm going to do just to make this easy for myself? I'm going to copy and paste, but be very careful with copy and paste. This is where a lot of problems come up. And so the type equals email. So we have a type email and we have email for the ID and the model is email. And so with that, we now have, oh, see, easy to make a typo. So we want to be very careful with copy and paste. So we've got our email and then our password. And the password type is going to cause you to see just dots when you type. So the idea is to keep that a secret. And password. And that's why, because you're not really seeing what you're inputting, and everybody does find that kind of annoying, um, they, we will often have a, a password verify. In fact, you pretty much always have a password verify. So we have password, password verify, and password verify. So this is, you know, in vanilla JavaScript, we, we did a lot of work with the prompt to get in data. And, and there's, you know, not a lot of control you have there. But here, we're going to be able to control this a lot better because we're, we're actually using the model, uh, vModel directive to bind to our data. And then we will have programmatic access when we go to validate. So let's make sure, OK. Say verify password. And then we have the type equals submit. So let's format that and just take a look. And up, oh, one thing we want to do is to get these into a paragraph tag. That's just to give us for our styling and to give us a block element there. OK, so we have this all set up and we're now ready to to do our submit. So what happens then when we submit is this submit prevent this vion handler sends us to the validate form. And so we're given some instructions here that about how we want to validate and it looks like we want username and email to be to have something in them. We're not really very picky about that. I think there's a stretch goal to actually validate that it's a, a valid email. Um, and we want the password and the password verified to be equal. So those are the things that we're going to do in here. So this is going to end up being one giant if, if, one giant Boolean expression in an if. So because those those username, password ha have been connected to our form with the V model. We'll be able to pick up the value using, and because they're identified in data, we'll pick up the value for them using this. Um, so we have them in an object, and we'll say not equal empty string. So that's all we have to do to test for blank. Sometimes I've done it many ways. Other times, another way I've tested for blank is dot length not equal equal zero. So that's another way. But let's stick with uh, this is what's in your instructions. So username cannot be blank. And I do like to use the triple equals because that just is a very sure way to get your test. So we're specifically saying that it's not equal an empty string. And that's how we've initialized it. So if it was null or undefined, that wouldn't pass. That would, I mean, 
that would still it would still not be equal to empty screen. But I just I just think using the triple equal 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 equal, equal or the not equal equal is a safer way to go with JavaScript testing. So then we want to add some more conditions here. So we have the username, and then we'll say this. And we're putting these tests in parentheses just to keep them separate. Not equal equal empty string. So that's our test for um, not blank. And then if then we'll test for this dot password equals equal equal this dot password verify. So that's those fulfill our three tests there. And if all of those match, let's format. Um, if we pass all of that, then we get to say we get to say um, get to run our instruction, which is this dot show form equals false. So we get to turn off our form. It's no longer going to show. But if it doesn't pass, we leave our form up and we say this dot show error equals true. So that's going to keep our form there. But so if I if I have this form and for one of these I don't submit it, I'm going to get my error message. I mean, even if I enter something there, I'm still going to get it. I need to fulfill all of this. Oh, see, and because we use the email type, it's it's telling us, you know, that we need to have an email for password. Um, they were equal. Okay, so that's that's something that you know we don't we didn't really want to do, right? Because um, so you might want to put a check in there that they have to be not blank too. So it's that's not in your instructions, but the fact is that they're initialized to blank, and if I don't any, enter anything, they stay blank, but they pass this equal equal. So I'll leave that to you. You might want to do that um, check. Or empty password. Okay, but and you'll notice when you enter in the password, ah, it's not, it shouldn't be showing pass, shouldn't be showing that. Let's see, did I type? Ah, yes, password verify. These should be type equals password. That's the downside of the copy paste. I used to work with a developer who called it the QD method, quick and dirty. And it was mostly dirty, so I would definitely be careful with, with that. But now when you enter in here, you see the dots, and therefore you do need to pass, you do need to test those. So we can do this. We have to do a.com. And if we pass, we see our, our positive message. All right, so that gets us our thank you message. And so this completes part one of collecting data. And we're going to do some more data collection in part two, but we're also going to introduce the routing. All right, so let's go take a look at the notes again. So we've actually completed the project for, for chapter eight, and now we're going to look at the project for chapter nine where we bring in routing. Um, we're going to be adding code to a survey, we're going to be creating a new component, the secret view, and then we're going to be uh, making sure our router is set up to, to uh, interpret our new, um, our new view, our new routes, which we'll, we'll set that up so there's a slash survey and a slash secret. So in the end, these are, this is what we'll be creating. So to start with, we need to take a look at our router and add a route for survey. And let's take a look at the code. So you are given a survey component. You don't have a secret component. You're going to be creating that. But you do have this survey component. It has a lot of work to be done. But the first thing we're going to do, we're going to look at the router. So with the router, we've got some to-dos. And basically, routing is mapping a path to a component. The name is really a nice to have. It's it's something that you can use. And generally, I keep these lowercase. I don't use uppercase for um, 
these names because sometimes that gets confusing. You know, you forget, am I upper or lower? So the convention is to just use a lowercase. But the component will be uppercase because that is the convention for these components. So we've got the route already set up for our home page, which we just worked on gathering user information. And by the way, this is kind of like an authorization program where you have to get the user to sign on before you show them any secret information. But you want to add a, we want to add this survey. So we, it, it already exists, the component. It's not completely coded. but And then we can use this single quote. And the at is a shorthand for source and views and survey. And we get a little help there. So we pull in the survey and then we add so the routes is an array, and each object has a path name and component, must have a path and component, and can have a name. And we say the path, and we're going to make this survey. So now if you do slash survey, it, it will take you to survey. And our name, I'm just going to leave it the lowercase survey and component. I'm going to make that component. I'm going to make that survey. Okay, and did you notice how that lit up then? So like before I had it, it was sort of grayed out. So it's it's hoping that you're going to use it, but it doesn't light up until you do. So now we, this is just VS Code. So now we have our two routes and our next step will be to fill out our, our member survey. So we have a number of to-dos in here. First thing, set up an on directive to handle form submission. So with this, we want to say uh, b on equals. And you know, I'm just going to cheat and go back and look at how I did it. Just to be sure, I'm going to do a v on submit prevent. And we'll just use that here and we have a validate form that's been set up for us there so we'll set that v on submit validate so that will get us to validation when we click on a button that is of type submit and that's already been set up here then we're going to add an error message in similar to what we did in the other form so p class equals error B show equals show error. So we're going to again test to see if there is an error when we show to make this visible. Please check the information you have entered. Be sure to fill in all fields. To fill in all fields. All right, so we have that error and it won't show up unless we are there. Let's see if we can bring this up. So I think we can just type in survey. Yeah, so we've got a little bit of everything written, but we have some work to do on each of them. So add the proper vModel directive. So let's see if we can format this. So we have this P class error, okay, label for Q, input Q, okay, so we want to set up a V model for this, V model equals Q, Q1. And that maps to, we have our questions are Q1 through 5, Q1 is a string, Q2 and 3 are arrays, Q4 four and 5 are strings. So in our first one, we, we just let them enter whatever they want, a string. Um, in the second question, we want to create a loop to duplicate the label element structures for each item in the language options array. So we're, we are given language options as an array. And there's a text and a value. So we'll show the text, but when they, but we'll bind the value to 
our data. So this is common that your text and your value aren't always the same. And so we're going to just set up. We want, in order to get looping on this V2, we want to set up a V4 in our label. So we're going to use our label as the outer element. We'll loop on that. And we'll say language, language in language options. So we're pulling out one language at a time into this language field. And again, I like to give it a key index just to keep, be sure to keep view straight. So colon key equals language. All right. And oh, sorry, equals index. All right, and then that looks good. And then input type equals checkbox, and we're gonna bind this to the, with V model to Q2. So whatever value they select is gonna get bound, and we'll bind that value so I can just use value equals language, language dot value. So remember, I'm going to I'm I'm going to capture the value from that language object, but then I'm going to display language dot text. So I'll show them the text, but I will capture the value. So when they click on any of those, and because it's an array, it will allow me to capture multiple values. So when you study forms, um, you'll see that checkboxes allow for multiple selects, whereas you know radio buttons, you, you're only allowed to select one. And so it's because we are allowing for multiple selects, we need to capture it in an array. So what do we have now? We have our checkboxes. And if you inspect here, you should see that the value is JS and we're showing the the JavaScript. So we don't capture that. So we can just go ahead and select as many or as few as we want and that will bring in as many into the array as needed. So the next thing we're going to do is set up an options loop for topics. And this is similar. We're going to uh, put our v4 on the label and topic We'll just do topic index in topic options. And again, topic options is supplied. If you look down here, you'll see topic options. So there's a text and a value. And so we, we have that and then we want to get the V model equal to topic. Oh, actually, sorry, Q3. Q3 is our model, is our question number. And the value will equal topic value. And then what we'll be showing in here for our label will be the text, topic text. And again, topic is just a, a variable that I'm using to pull out each one of these topic options. So now looking back here, I can see that all of my topics are spelled out. And you can see that's nice because you don't have to like write a bunch of HTML. If you want to add or remove topics, you can just go down and modify your data. So again, data-driven code is what it's all about because we don't want to write a lot of HTML. We don't want to be responsible for a lot of HTML. Data is much easier to deal with. So the next thing that we're going to do, we go to, we're going to set up spaces or tabs. We need a V model on this select. So we're going to set the ideas at Q5. The V model will be Q5. And that'll just find whatever answer the user gives to that 
to that Q5 value. So that should be already set up for us. So option. Um, so that gives us the input type submit. And we're ready now to actually enter this and then get it processed. And in order to do that, we need to look at validate form. Uh, it looks like maybe I did not set up the V model. No, got, yeah, I did not set up the V value. So on the, what type of websites? This is Q4. This is a string. I need to set up the V model on that V model. So I'm just binding again to the variables in data. Q4. That way those will get picked up. So now I'm ready to take a look at my validate form. And for this, I need to look, we want to say Q1 is not blank, and then the lengths of Q2 must be greater than zero. So you must, you must basically pick one of each. So let's do this. Um, if, and we're going to have our big if. So we'll end up with and I'm just going to kind of set up this structure. So our syntax, we need to now fill in some ifs. So uh, we'll say q1 or this dot q1 not equal equal blank. And this dot q2 dot length. So these are arrays not equal equal blank. And so we definitely want to use the length for testing arrays. And we got too many equals there. And then this dot q3 length not equal equal blank. Oh, sorry, not equal equal zero. Yes, with length we're testing a number, not a string. So and this dot Q4 not equal equal blank and this dot Q5 not equal equal blank. So wherever we were capturing arrays, we're looking at the length not equal to zero, and wherever we're capturing strings, we're looking at the string not being empty string, which is how we've initialized everything. So we're just making sure that there's something everywhere. And then if that's the case, then we're going to, if, if that's the case, we are going to set our show error to, oh shoot, let's just get rid of that. All right, we'll just clean that up again a bit. So, if everything is good, then we're going to use the router to go to the secret page. So we don't automatically do anything based on the user hitting that button. We test the data, and if it looks good, we can route using a programmatic router call router.push to secret. So the only way we can get there is by passing this validation and then and then getting there. Otherwise, if if we don't pass the validation, then we set show error to true. All right. So now we can go take a look at this. We're in survey. And this is a string. We can select something there. This is just a string. This is a string. And then, OK, we haven't set up secret, but we tried to push to it. So let's go ahead and get the secret form, the secret set up. Um, if, well, we can do a quick test and make sure that if we submit without that, we get our error. So yes, we want to make sure both cases are tested. And so that, that takes care of our survey. And the next thing we're going to do is work on our secret component. 
Let's go take a look at the instructions for setting up the secret. Let's see, secret page. So that's this will be our last view. And so once we get in here, creating the secret view, and we're given s sort of a, a boilerplate template here that we can start with. So I'll just copy that and use that as a starting point. And so again, it's going to be routed to, so I'm going to put it under views and I'm going to call it secret.view. And okay, so what we've got is a template that posts a message and this is just a raw secret page. And it's for stretch, you can definitely enhance this. And the message is just a very boring, this component works, but this will get us going. So that gives us a secret view. And then when the router, we need to import that and make that available to our router. Use views, secret. And then we need to set up a route for that. So we'll add one more route object here to the route array and its path secret or secret 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 and name survey or secret. Just give it the same name and component will be secret. Okay, so this just matches what we have up there. And then we've given it a path and a name. And the name is just, again, a convenience. We can use it in code instead of the path. And that allows us to tinker with our paths but not have to change our code. So let's go take a look at this. I think that's all we need to do. Well, we can go over and test that. So if we notice, even though in a real authenticate, authenticated page situation, we would not want to allow our user to just type in secret. And you might look at that for a stretch, that um, if a person tries to load something that, that they are supposed to wait for our validation or authentication on, there are ways, and you can read about it in the view router, um, to guard against entering a view. It takes a little more code, though. In our case, really, all of our routes are available from any through the browser without you know any real authentication um, but there are ways to do that um, but now we should be able to follow our path which is we type in our name and we type in an email we enter our password they get checked this takes us ah there's a problem here with our Thank you for signing up. We don't have a link there. Do we have an error in here? Let's take a look. No error. So let's go look at our thanks for signing up on the home page. Thanks. Oh, yes, we never hooked that up because we hadn't studied. We hadn't studied that. So we have a to do to create a link here. And so now that we have a router, we can set up a router link. And a router link is like an anchor tag. And we have this idea of a to, a to directive. Let's see. Ah, uh, sorry, we have our router link and, and it's not a, it's not a, a, a bind like, like a V bind. It's just a to attribute. And then we're going to have them go to the survey if, if they, um, so we want to put this paragraph, let's see, we'll put this paragraph, we'll put this text inside our router link, sort of like an anchor tag, and we'll cut, we'll surround it with the paragraph. So let's take a look at that. So now when we go here, let's see. Um, AAA.com, and we submit. 
Now this is a link. Ah, but I probably just want the link around the click here. So let's move this to click here. And now when I click on that, it takes me to the survey. So that looks good. So I think that we've got everything we need. Let's take one more run through this. Um, I'm kind of curious too about what kind of data we're seeing in here. So we see our route. We can tell our path. Um, we can look at any params. We don't have any in this. And we have our meta object and that's empty. So let's say we go back home. And you know, you can add for a stretch, add a nav bar to this, you know, and make it easy to go home. And so we have AAA, AAA at gmail.com, password, verify, submit, click to survey, 10,000 years, Python experience, cute sites, spaces, submit and it takes me there. So I'm looking pretty good there. Um, anyway, that concludes the coding that we have to do for this. Let's go back and do our build. So we've got our dev working. So npm run build, make sure that we can build this and we should be building it to a docs file. There's our docs file, our assets. We have all our chunked up CSS, JavaScript. Yeah, that looks pretty ugly. And then we have our index. Everything looks good. So git status. We've got our docs file and we've modified some of our, we've modified some of our router and our home and survey. We've added the secret view. So git add git commit add code and build git push and then oh I'm going to use my new I have my plugin on VS code that if I hit F1 I can say open in github project so this takes me right out to the project and I can see that I've added to my views just within the last few seconds. I'll go out to settings and I'll set up with the docs directory, my GH pages. It's going to take it a minute to process, probably enforce HTTPS. And we're loading that. So this is a really powerful way to get a lot of application features going. We've got views that can swap in and out. We've got forms that can collect data and, and, and we can manage it easily through functions. We can control the flow of the program. We, you know, essentially instead of writing a bunch of HTML pages that all have the same nav and the same header, we can just have a few components and just simulate having multiple pages. So very powerful. Let's see if that's done here. Yes, so we'll grab that link and get it posted. You know, you can see the old link from SU Web Dev. I definitely want to replace that with the current link. And so that takes care of the project. So I hope you enjoy that and it's and get a feeling of confidence in controlling routes programmatically, collecting data from forms, and validating it.